Guten Tag. Today we're going to talk about brewing German Bock beer and chilling wort. Too many days in the darkness without a glimpse of the light. Running tired and broken and scared, but I swear I'll never give up the fight. I see you broken and beat. Hi, I'm Martin Keane, and I am taking the homebrew challenge to brew all 99 beer styles as defined by the BJCP. And today I'm brewing my first German Bock. It's 4C Helles Bock, also known as Maybock. Now this being a German Bock beer, it has those characteristics that other Bock beers have. It's got that really sort of strong, multi, robust flavor to it. And it's also relatively high in alcohol. But unlike other Bocks, it's much, much paler. So let's take a look at the ingredients for this beer. I'm actually combining two different malts as the base malt. First of all, I have uh, what you really expect, which is German Pilsner malt that's going in. I have six pounds of that. I'm combining it with Maris Otter, five pounds of Maris Otter. Now, yes, I'm aware that Maris Otter is not a German grain whatsoever. It's British, uh, but I really like the sort of the biscuity characteristic this is gonna give me um, a little bit more than if I sort of bump this up with a ton of Munich or Vienna malt. Now, that being said, I also have three pounds of Munich malt, which I will be adding into the grist as well. So that's gonna get me to a beer that'll be around about 7%. Lift me up in your branches. We can watch the sun. Now to get to a post-boil gravity of 1070, I'm using 14 pounds of grain, which is probably the most I've used in any beer that I've, I've brewed in this Unibrow system so far. And when I first put it in, I didn't even think it was gonna fit. But giving it a stir and a bit of time to settle, the grain's in there and it seems to be running pretty well now. I'm gonna mash this one at 152 Fahrenheit and I'm aiming for a pre-boil gravity of 1060. We are and now the fun part, lifting up 14 pounds of sodden grain out of this wort. <laughs> Hops, it's our old friend Hallertau Mittelfrö. I am using two ounces, which will go in at 60 minutes as the bittering hop, and then 15 minutes from the end, one other ounce. Yeah, I make decisions to glow. Ridiculous flow. So let's talk a little bit about chilling wort because this has been kind of a, a consistent problem for me over the last few weeks. I've been brewing all of these lagers in the middle of summer. So what I'm using is this immersion chiller. It's a jaded hydra and it just plops into the boil kettle. And what's nice about this is it's triple coiled. So the water comes in and goes through three separate coils before exiting the other side. Now, Jaded claim that this guy can chill your wort from boiling down to 68 degrees, which is ale pitching temperatures, in three minutes. Uh, to do that, there's a couple of caveats. First of all, you need to get a huge amount of water through this thing. So it recommends six gallons per minute rushing through there. Now, I measured the speed of my uh, faucet in the, in the brewery here, and I was getting something like three gallons per minute. So what I do is I use the outdoor faucet with a hose pipe. With that, I'm getting about five gallons a minute, so pretty close. Now, the other thing to get that super fast chilling temperature is kind of obviously you need cold tap water to start with. It says that you will get this, this chilling to 68 degrees in three minutes if you have 58 degree tap water. 
Okay, that is not happening here. Uh, in early fall in North Carolina, my groundwater is around 82 degrees. So what has been happening so far with all of the lagers that I've been brewing is I can chill down to 90 Fahrenheit pretty quickly and then I'm kind of out of luck. So what to do? Well actually, Jaded have a potential solution to be able to get around this warm groundwater and I'm going to put that to the test with today's brew. So as for the immersion chiller, I normally give it a quick rinse in the sink and then with 10 minutes left in the boil, I put it into the wort to sanitize it. When time's up, I run the pump to get it recirculating and go outside and turn on the garden hose to start pumping water through the immersion chiller. Now what's going to happen here is this is going to chill pretty rapidly to about 10 Fahrenheit over the temperature of my groundwater, which is about 82 Fahrenheit. So I'll get sort of to the low 90s and then it really won't be able to go much further. What Jaded Brewing recommend you do is you fill a bucket with five gallons of water, eight pounds of ice, and then take a pump here and pump that ice water through the immersion chiller to, to, to really cool the last bit of the work down. So I'm gonna wait until I get to around 90 Fahrenheit, then I'm going to take my icy water and, and pump it through here. So there we go, it only took maybe five, six minutes. Um, we're about 10 Fahrenheit over groundwater temperature. So let's go use the icy water. The icy water now is just a little bit, a few degrees above freezing, so it's ready to go. Medulla oblongata, just doing what I gotta. Is this the end or just the beginning? So how did it do? We started at 90 and uh, just ran it through that bucket for probably not more than two or three minutes and we're down to 70 Fahrenheit. So that's worked pretty well. Now 70 Fahrenheit, yeah, that's still not lager pitch temperature, but it's much, much closer. It means now that I only need to drop another 15 or 20 Fahrenheit in my uh, fermentation chamber before I can pitch the yeast. So I should be adding the yeast in much sooner than before when I was starting at 90 Fahrenheit and having to drop 40 degrees. Speaking of yeast, I've made a starter of WLP 830. This is German lager yeast. I'll add this at 50 degrees. Now, here is what I'm gonna to do to get that down to 50 degrees. So I've got my chest freezer here. I've set it to 36 Fahrenheit and I've put my beer in here in the fermenter. And I've also put in a tilt wireless hydrometer which will give me a temperature sensor reading to my phone so I can keep track of how cool uh, the wort is. And when it hits 50 Fahrenheit, that's when I'll add my yeast. Incidentally, the reason that I have this piece of sanitized foil here and not an airlock is I'm a little bit concerned about suck back with the temperature change. I was concerned that uh, some of the liquid that's in the airlock could end up getting sucked back here, similar to the way that happens with a cold crash. So while I'm crashing this to uh, yeast pitch temperature, I just cover it with this foil. Uh, I'll replace that with an airlock once I've reached my desired temperature. So I'm back here with Brian. We're gonna try Heller's Bock. Yes, I'm uh, excited. Yeah, so this one uh, fermented down to 1013 and that gave me a gravity of 7.5%. So fairly strong for a, for a German lager. Yeah, it is. And are there any commercial uh, variations of the beer that I recognize, names that I would know? Yeah, to me, this is a style completely new. I haven't seen it anywhere. It's also known as Maybach. So mm. you may have seen it um, sold as Maybach, but... No, no, it'll be a new experience for me. All right, I'm so... I'm excited. Okay, so first of all, is this, this, does this look like the color of a typical Maybach to you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Of course. Hey, of all the Maybachs I've seen, this is definitely the most typical the, color. The most Maybachy. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. And it's uh, it is a nice color, though. It's a nice golden amber, I guess yeah. I, I, I describe it. Yeah, yeah so, so not much in the... Aroma front, mm -hmm. I think. No, it's definitely, there's not, I mean, there's, there's no hop. Um, I'm not really detecting any sweetness to it either. It's, it's very, um, yeah, there's very little on the nose on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see what we think of a, yeah. a Hellas box. It's definitely malty, right? Yep. Yeah, there's, there's no hop in there anywhere. I mean, there's some bitterness that, you, that you're tasting. Um, to me, it's, it's living up a little bit to its Bok name, despite the fact that it doesn't look like any sort of Bok I would recognize. <laughs> yeah. But it's certainly very uh, malt forward. 
I mean, you said it was 7.9%, mm -hmm. so high in alcohol. Yep. Um, but it doesn't have a strong alcohol flavor to me, though. It's not like, it doesn't feel or, or taste like there's a ton of alcohol in this. Those are the best ones, though, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, okay, we are we are now very familiar in the ways of Hellas Bock slash yes. Maybach. Yeah. We, um, we know what this one tastes like, anyway. <laughs> exactly. And we're going to assume that this is dead on the style, right? Yep, we are, we are. All right, All right cheers. cheers. It is amazing, though, how different the ingredients are not that different between this one and the last one. Really? Yeah. Oh, they, they taste... But they taste so different. Which one do you like better? I, I think I like that oh, one better. That one for sure. 